All right, people, good morning. Dennis here, and I've got a good one for you today. I'm going to read to you a little article that I wrote. Now, if you read the title of this video, you're probably expecting that I'm gonna advocate for getting up at 4 a.m. to find a nice quiet place to read um, and tap into your creative center and get productive and get ahead of the day and all that, just like all these other morning routine gurus advocate for. But that's not what I'm all about. Not exactly anyway. So here we go. Here's what I wrote for you. I'm gonna read this because I wanna stay on point. So, while a nice quiet cup of coffee in the morning is truly delightful, I'm not here to promote practices that don't work for 99% of the working population. I'm here to help people, real people, get shit done in the most ancestrally aligned way possible in today's world. So that you have a legitimate chance at health and happiness. So I just wanna recap and hold on that thought real quick. For those of you who know me, um, I view everything through the evolutionary lens as much as possible. I, I would say just about everything through an evolutionary lens. Um, and so when I think about your fitness, I'm thinking about our ancestors. And of course, we have to find a way to make that work in today's world. And I do believe that if we find that way, those practices that align with that, that's how we'll achieve health and happiness. Back to article. Here's a fact. Our ancestors were hunters. If you don't believe that, stop the video now and come back when you get your mind unfucked. Can I say that on YouTube? I don't know. Unfudged? I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully they can do that beep thing. Hunters have a few obvious behaviors that we can learn from. For one, they exercise before breakfast. How do I know? Because if you want to eat as a hunter, you have to catch it first. You have to get your food first. And what's the best time of day to hunt? In the low light of the morning. We don't even have to speculate on this. We can see this behavior today in modern hunter-gatherer groups tribes such as the Hadza. They're a real uh, paleo carnivore type favorite uh, case study, the Hadza. There's some others out there as well. So it's no coincidence that our cortisol levels are higher upon awakening, along with our body temperature, our circulating levels of neurotransmitters associated with drive and reward, uh, also, these same neurotransmitters, for example, anandamide, are associated with decreased pain sensitivity, pain sensitivity, bronchodilation, increased mood, decreased fear, and exercise performance. So in other words, not only were we born to run, we were born to run in the morning, aka hunt. We were born to hunt in the morning. It's not a coincidence that all of these internal factors are reaching a peak right in the AM after awakening, right after sunrise, because our bodies are meant to be primed and ready to go so we can get the job done. Moreover, it's no surprise that anandamide, which is an endocannabinoid neurotransmitter, um, is greatly elevated after long moderately paced run, and along with other similar endocannabinoids. Um, that I talked about those in another video. Um, and these are associated with neuroplasticity and neurogenesis. Because if you're a hunter and you have a great successful hunt, obviously it would be advantageous to have our brain learn from that experience. So anandamide, this neurotransmitter, endocannabinoid, 
is associated with drive, it's associated with exercise performance, and you know, all those things that are talked about, bronchodilation, we can breathe better, we have better mood, we have decreased fear. Um, so we're gonna have a better hunt, and then it's gonna also be elevated, and it's gonna lead to, after the run, it's gonna lead to neurogenesis, so like literally new neurons, brain cells, and neuroplasticity, so the rewiring of the brain, so we can learn from that experience. These things are not a coincidence when you just think about, well, what did we do? And then how did our body chemistry optimize to make sure that we were really good at that thing? We hunted in the morning. Now, the neurotransmitters released after a great successful hunt will leave you, will not only do all those things, but they'll leave you feeling incredibly euphoric and will be addictive to the degree that you would naturally want to repeat this behavior for the rest of your life because that's the thing that is sustaining you. So of course we evolved so it would feel good, right? It's gotta feel good or what's the point of living? Um, or what's the likelihood that we would continue to do the hard things that sustain us? So the morning hunt is a sustainable practice for health and happiness. I can't really speak to the morning uh, 4 a.m. <laughs> reading of the newspaper and, and journaling from an ancestral point of view. I, I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe that's how we got like our shamans or something like that. But for most of us, it was a morning run. It's, that's the sustainable practice that leads to health and happiness. So what does the modern morning hunt look like? Well, really, it can look like any 30 to 90 minute moderate exercise regimen um, right upon awakening and before breakfast. That's key. If we eat, we're starting a whole nother cascade of chemical signals in our body, right? Why are we going to go work hard to get the food when we already got the food? If you ask me, however, and you really want to level up, I would add a few specific criteria. Number one, get outside in the morning light, just like our ancestors would have done. And there's a lot of really awesome science to back this. This will greatly amplify your healthy cortisol spike in the morning, which will calibrate, will wake you up and it will calibrate your circadian rhythm for the rest of the day. So you're having energy at, at appropriate times to include down-regulating and having a better night's sleep. And that will repeat itself, hence the circadian rhythm. Get some morning light. Number two, spend at least 15 minutes doing strength exercise. Like I said, your body's actually gonna be warmer just after rising so it's actually safer to do your strength exercise at this time in the morning and this is um yeah your uh, um forgetting words now your internal temperature core temperature that core duh anyway your core temperature is literally higher in the morning um and so training the musculoskeletal system with external resistance i.e weights is essential for healthy aging, from uh, developing strong muscles and bones and to improved metabolism. Everybody thinks they wanna lose weight, but what they really want is an improved body composition. And that comes with resistance training. Number three, spend at least 30 minutes doing moderate intensity cardiovascular exercise. Running or cycling are two very easy options um, there's some mixed modal stuff you can do, but we want to sustain our heart rate at a higher level and specifically working at 75% of our heart rate max has been shown to be particularly potent at inducing those happy brain chemicals. Okay. All those things that are going to literally lead. So uh, specifically in Nandamide, this is the one I've been really, really, um, kind of fixed on lately. Um, everything from uh, improved mood to decreased pain sensitivity to improved immune system with some of its associated factors. Um, 
metabolism up shit. A lot of cool things. A lot, a lot of great, good, great things. Health and happiness. Okay, can't live without it. And then finally, four, reward yourself with a post-workout meal. Aim for 25 grams of protein, 50 grams of carbohydrates for optimal muscle synthesis. Um, you've heard, may have heard of the anabolic window. You also have kind of like a carb window where 30 minutes after exercise, the, you're gonna metabolize those carbs in a much more efficient way. You'll take those carbs, especially if they're simple, essentially right into your muscles um, and forget any chance of those carbs being stored as fat or whatever, all the insulin spikes associated. So it's a perfect time for a cheat meal, um, for a shake or chocolate milk, and then you can go about the rest of your day paleo. I know, woo. But hey, we have the knowledge now. And um, you know, if you wanted to be more ancestrally aligned, you could say, well, the Hots have probably were getting some berries and some honey during their hunt. Um, and those are higher in fructose. But um, yeah, I, look, hey, we do have some advances and I'm open to some of these things like uh, you know, simple sugars, lactose, and uh, even the sucrose and chocolate milk to get our muscles resynthesized after a workout. But the rest of your day, you gotta be aligned. So you got that 30 minute window. But the more important thing is you're conditioning your body to associate a reward, the, the ultimate reward, food, with exercise, okay? It's a, it becomes a result of exercise, it's like Pavlov's dogs, right? Skinner, like classical conditioning. We're saying do A and you get B as the result. Do exercise, go on the hunt, get the kill, get the reward, get your awesome snack, whatever it is, shake, or chocolate milk, and this will become addicting. You will be addicted, and it's the best addiction ever. Period. Tangent, real quick, just because it bothers me that I, I uh, wasn't thinking of all the things about anandamide, but real quick, I read this study um, about the endocannabinoid system, and so why do we care? Why do I care so much? It's involved with everything from appetite control, uh, pain sensation, including control of chronic pain, macronutrient metabolism, uh, mood and mood disorders, and immune cell functions. Maybe I did say all that. Um, uh, and also the things like I, I, I said, you know, um, cognition, so neurogenesis, neuroplasticity, Gosh, I still feel like I'm missing one, but that's okay. So that was not the point. I could talk about this in another one. I just, I just want to share everything with you guys, but that, that was it. So recap, the most important thing I want you to hear today, the morning routine, get outside, get a little morning light. That can be a part of your exercise routine or it can just be like, Hey, let me go take the dog out, breathe in deep and, uh, kind of get get some fresh air and some morning light going before the exercise. I would call that a pre-workout. And actually guys, I'll give you one more hack. I would say, go ahead and make that coffee. And maybe you want to stand outside and have your coffee while you're breathing the fresh air or walking the dog. But um, if we're really truly biohacking right now, the uh, dopamine spike that you're gonna get from coffee is likely gonna let you work out a bit harder and a bit longer. So get more out of it and it'll feel better as well. Um, so get outside the morning light, have your morning coffee, totally cool with the coffee, not food. Spend at least 15 minutes doing strength exercise, at least 30 minutes doing moderate intensity cardio, trying to get to 75% heart rate and reward yourself with a post-workout meal. If you do this, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, you don't need me anymore. Your life has changed. You're gonna be like, I did it, man. I know how to do this thing. And then you'll be asking me all the cooler high level questions. Like how do I squat more weight? How do I do the clean and jerk or whatever it is, bar muscle ups. And then we can just have fun because we don't have to, you know, try and 
strategize your life anymore because you've got this morning routine down. I, I love it. All right. Peace.